the Maestro Pro and Edge, Axion's next generation multi well microelectrode array platforms, provide the most comprehensive in vitro cardiomyocyte assay. The cardiomyocyte field potential assay has been the bedrock for cardiac safety development and optimization for years, whereas the conduction assay maps the signal propagation across the array, providing information on cardiomyocyte coupling. Axion announced the LEAP assay in Q3 of 2017 and then delivered LEAP to customers earlier this year, enabling action potential measurements in a multi-well plate format. And now Axion is happy to announce the addition of impedance to the Maestro Pro and Edge for cardiomyocyte contractility assays. Together, these four assays make the Maestro Pro and Edge the most advanced cardiomyocyte assay technology. All of these assays rely on the same core assay technology namely the assessment of cell-based cardiomyocyte models with microelectrode arrays. As the cells are deposited in each well, they bind to the surface and interact with the microelectrodes embedded in the substrate. The field potential signal arises from the propagation of the cardiac action potential across the microelectrode, whereas the field potential comes from a relatively large population of cells, the leap signal originates from the cells attached directly on the electrode, following an induction process that transiently strengthens the cell electrode coupling. Each of these signals provides information on the depolarization and repolarization of the cardiomyocytes. By performing these measurements across the array of electrodes in each well, information about the propagation of the cardiac action potential can be directly quantified, namely the speed and direction, as well as the consistency of the pacer location and propagation pattern. Following this same framework, we now introduce the ability to measure impedance from the microelectrodes, which fluctuates as the cardiomyocytes mechanically contract and relax, allowing analysis of cardiomyocyte contractility. When performed across the array of electrodes in each well, it is immediately clear that there is a wealth of information on cardiomyocyte movement, with some electrodes exhibiting a decrease in impedance and others an increase. We have developed methods to combine these signals into a well-wide contractility signal while retaining the intricate structure um, from the array-based signal. For characterization of the impedance assay, we'll focus primarily on the well-wide signal over the next few slides. We used blebostatin, a myosin inhibitor, to characterize the array-based cardiomyocyte contractility signal. After live dosing with blebostatin and a vehicle control, it's clear to see the rapid reduction in the contractility signal for blebostatin relative to the stable signal for the vehicle control. Indeed, when the contractility beat amplitude was quantified 30 minutes following dosing, the blevastatin and verapamil showed clear dose-dependent trends, while the vehicle control and E4031 showed no change. Although the contractility signal was diminished with blevastatin, the field potential signal remains unaffected. In fact, the field potential beat detection occurs simultaneous with the contractility measurement, allowing the contractility beats to be triggered on field potential depolarization, as is shown on the right. In this way, it's clear to quantify the changes in cardiomyocyte contractility before and after addition of verapamil and blevastatin, even as the contractility signal is reduced. The impedance assay can also be used to more generally monitor cardiomyocyte attachment, such that cytotoxic effects can be easily quantified. Here, the addition of Wabane elicits a dose and time-dependent effect on cell viability, with high concentrations killing the cells within two hours of dosing, and intermediate concentrations having a slower effect. It's worth exploring why we measure contractility with an array of microelectrodes as compared to an extremely large electrode. The first reason relates to reliability and robustness. The redundancy across electrodes affords array-based contractility with advantages in extracting relevant features from cardiomyocyte contractility. Also, the array-based contractility allows the assay to be invariant to cell culture coverage both compensating for spotty cultures and allowing advanced preparations. To illustrate this, we have an example with seven cardiomyocyte spheroids deposited in a well. The spheroids attached to the surface and some merged over time, such that there were four distinct cardiomyocyte cultures, indicated by the four colored ovals. We slowed the beating with evabridine to accentuate the independent beating of the spheroid groups. Using array-based contractility, the mechanical beating was measured from, this, from three of the spheroid groups on the array, clearly beating independently as shown here. A large electrode would have smeared these signals or not detected them altogether. 
So array-based contractility excels at standard contractility assays, but also adds flexibility to measure from advanced preparations as, this, as the field matures. As an extension of this concept, flexibility highlights the second design consideration and advantage in developing array-based contractility. By using the array for contractility, the user doesn't have to compromise between contractility, field potential, leap, or conduction. All aspects of the Maestro cardiomyocyte assay can be performed at high quality on the same plates. For instance, a large electrode has poor performance in field potential assays. Here we show field potential recordings from a microelectrode and stimulation paddle recorded simultaneously from different wells in an Axion MEA plate. Clearly, the larger stim paddle uh, provides an inaccurate measure of the field potential as the repolarization feature doesn't line up with the microelectrode in the same well. Furthermore, the inaccuracy is inconsistent across wells, making the field potential measurements from a large electrode very deceptive. Due to the smearing of the field potential by large electrodes, the array-based assay is the only way to ensure accurate field potential and contractility signals from the same cardiomyocytes. By comparison, leap induction is not possible on a large electrode, further emphasizing the importance of an array-based approach. Leap may be performed independently on a subset of electrodes in the array for simultaneous leap and field potential recordings, or the redundancy across the array can be used with leap for the only scalable label-free action potential measurement technology. Here we show one leap signal from each well of a dose 96 well plate with clear triangulation of the action potential visible for teratoline and vinoxorin and automated detection of EADs for increasing doses of defetilide. And finally, conduction is only possible with an array-based approach. Paste assays are able to resolve subtle changes in conduction velocity, whereas gross conduction changes appear in the propagation pattern consistency. In summary, the array-based approach offers flexibility without compromise across impedance, field potential, leap, and conduction assays, providing the best overall performance for in vitro cardiomyocyte assessment. Impedance will be available to all Maestro Pro and Edge customers in the first quarter of 2019, adding to the industry-leading performance of the Maestro Pro and Edge.